Hi everyone and welcome to Seek Sustainable Japan podcast. This is a bonus episode on another Medium article that I wrote about tourism in Japan and the positive flip side influence of Japan's international visitors. 2024 is set to be the biggest year yet for international visitors coming to Japan. And while most news articles seem to focus on over tourism and the bad apples in the crowd, I'd like to highlight how inbound tourism is having a positive influence on local people, the planet, proactive mindset, and a more sustainable economy. Also, ideas for how we might appeal to more of these good tourists to enjoy Japan travel. I'm JJ Walsh, based in Hiroshima, Japan, longtime business owner and tourism insider. I was a university teacher for many years teaching tourism and business, and then went on my own inbound ambassador in 2019. And since last year, I've started guiding. Um, but I've long been guide training. So I've been working and focused on sustainable travel for the last 20 years and uh, tourism in general for more than 30 years. Um, so these are a combination of my uh, insights, seeing the academic side, the business side, the practical side, but also connected to what I hear from and I see with international tourists myself now as a guide and a guide trainer. So one of the interesting things that I think we should try to develop more is how we have a lot of appeal of old things in Japan. Dark, dusty, cold, full of bugs and broken are the typical negative connotations my students, neighbors, and even local guides have said to me when referring to old buildings. But like many international visitors, I've always been drawn to the use of old things and old structures, which hold secrets of a bygone era, stories, legends, history, and a show of skill from artisans, craftspeople, and artists whose craft is unfortunately vanishing. The broken roof tile in the picture above was one of my favorite things to see on a visit to the Ponyo animated film location of Tomonoura one year. The swirls of power and balance design, which are so typical of temple or traditional house roof tiles, is made of simple natural clay materials, but so expertly crafted that they last for a century. Preserved and reused in a stylish local cafe, which I found run by a young entrepreneur who had a vision for pulling the past into the present modern use through his design in the eatery, which he filled with salvaged items from local derelict or akia buildings. If you find the details of life, especially daily life in Japan, interesting, as many international residents and travelers do, you will never be bored. It's a great skill to hone as a traveler, even if you're traveling where you live. And the bonus is that you will also really enjoy travels in Japan, no matter where you choose to go. The more off the beaten path, back route, routes you can find, the better. As travel guides and content creators for the tur tourism market, we can highlight the appeal of lesser known hidden in plain sight gems of daily life or traditions that would never otherwise be seen by visitors. Last month, I had a lovely couple I was guiding from a cruise ship one day, and we would see huge groups of 50 to 100 people from their ship on official tours walk by quite quickly at various points as we were wandering around our destination for our tour. And the couple looked at me and said with dismay, hey, how can those people walking by so quickly possibly know any of these interesting and lovely details that you are sharing with us? The short answer is they can't, they don't. But the question is, do they care? Now it's time to talk about the ugly tourist a little bit. Now this is unfortunately the only focus a lot of tourism articles have had 
uh, especially in Japan, as we've had a recent boom of tourists. But with the government targets to increase tourism significantly, it's worth pointing out that some of the ugly behaviors of visitors is something we want to try to dampen and encourage the better behaviors of good tourists that we want to welcome back. Of course, there are exceptions. There are fit, free, independent travelers who do a lot of their own research before visiting and are able to find hidden gems and enjoy engaging positively with locals. But the bad apples or the ugly tourists, however, do not appreciate the mundane, everyday charms of travel in Japan or most likely anywhere else either. Sometimes I do a tour and notice a disturbing shift in the energy once we arrive at the most famous part of the tour. There is a negative, highly charged, toxic vibe as tourists push ahead of others. Crowds push and rush with a sense of entitlement. I'm the only tourist here, are you? There's a million of us. Let's be nice to each other. Uh, this ugly tourist is someone rushing around and ruining the experience for everyone else in order to get their picture, eat their food, buy their souvenirs, and then rush on to the next top site. Everything they're doing is a shallow transaction, exploitative tourism that does not benefit local communities or the environment and ruins the experience for their fellow travelers, as well as locals, of course. Uh, should we feel sorry for them? As I doubt they remember or appreciate the experience. Their coveted bucket list photos of places they actually didn't care about when they visited are just a notch in their social media arsenal of destination slaughtered. <laughs> I love that expression I made up. What do you think? Unfortunately, superficial mass tourism is unwelcome and annoying, but is fueled by misguided government and destination management that prioritizes quantity over quality to maximize income. Every country has people guilty of it when they travel, even Japan. So how can we change and attract the good travelers? Our aim should be to bring out the good travelers in all of us, both domestic and inbound, attract the humble, respectful visitor who seeks out a destination with appreciation of preservation, reuse, and local ethical and sustainable products and services. Good travelers seek out sustainability, it's true. The good news is that many visitors now who are coming to Japan come with a higher standard and higher expectation of what it means to have high quality travel. This comes from higher standards as a more sustainable life standard in other countries, life, work, and travel, which is softly pushing Japan into a more sustainable business, product, and services direction. This then encourages more of the right kind of traveler through positive reviews and recommendations to friend, family, and coworkers, as well as social media when they do find places which are more sustainable. Plant-based options sprouting. Japan is still a challenge for vegan and vegetarian travelers who want to avoid meat, fish, and dairy, foods which create the worst damage for our people and planet. But in most destinations now, thanks to the steady influx of international visitors who are asking for plant-based options, more people offer plant-based options as well as have a better understanding of the meat, dairy, and fish industry issues. There is also more welcome promotion of locally sourced vegetables, fruit, fermented foods, and plant-based proteins listed in ingredients and dishes on menus. Searching Google Maps using Happy Cow, for example, for plant-based in Japan are rapidly increasing. Zero waste hydration. Guiding and traveling in Japan is great exercise. Many of the guests say they are collecting 20,000 steps each day as they walk around cities and sites, yet there are ridiculously few places to refill water bottles for healthy hydration. 
and I am often met with complete disregard from information center staff, train station staff, and restaurant staff who suggest we fill up in toilet bathroom sinks, yuck, or buy a single-use plastic bottle of water, no, ugh. For such a clean, organized, and efficient, great service high-tech Japan, a country proud of its soft water for sake, there is ridiculously level of understanding, ethical concerns, or care about providing safe and clean drinking water. It's a fact that single-use plastic bottled water has higher concentrations of microplastics for the user. It's made from oil, plastics, and uses fossil fuels in its creation and delivery. And it creates problems after use for our garbage incinerators, landfill, it's shipped to less developed countries, and also ends up in our oceans. Nothing about using plastic water bottles is better than tap water or filtered water, unless there is a state of emergency or natural disaster, and that's the only clean water you can get. Tap water is compromised or stopped, then you need the single-use plastic bottles. But for daily use, for usual, no, tap is so much better. Luckily, we have organizations like MyMizu, which are showing us where we can refill for free with safe and clean drinking water in Japan. I try to recommend these places by including them on my tour routes with visitors, uh, which they really appreciate. Take time also to thank the staff and promote the spots on social media to help elevate the value of refilling. I had a group recently from uh, the Netherlands and they all had their refillable bottles and on the route they were refilling right along with me. Um, I had another group of Americans who said their travel com country company gave them refillable bottles when they booked the tour, but they were unable to find places to refill as they traveled around, so they gave up, they stopped carrying them. So it sounds like there are positive influences happening around, but the availability and the information about where you can fill is often very hard to find. Compounding the lack of zero waste refill stations and people feeling forced to buy single use plastic bottles of water is the lack of garbage cans anywhere. This is causing areas like beautiful Miyajima to be cluttered with plastic cups and straws in front of the Tori Gate, esteemed for its Shinto connection with nature. It's really sad to see one of the few chains that were allowed to come to the sacred island of Miyajima, Starbucks, littering the most famous floating Tori Gate area. This is a real opportunity for Starbucks to step in start using reusable cups. They've already switched to paper straws, which is better, but the lids and the cups are still single-use plastic. We can do better. How to appeal to the right kind of tourist. The good news is that there are many good visitors enjoying their travels in Japan now, and they plan to return. The challenge is how to continue to build on sustainable, ethical, logical, kind and safe opportunities for more tourists like them to come and enjoy travel in Japan. Here are some of my tips. Let's do a top five tips way to attract good visitors. Provide low impact foods, highlight local fruits, vegetables, and plant-based protein options that everyone can eat. Also include gluten-free. Why not have the foundation being local fruits and vegetables, which hits all the targets. It's gluten-free, it's local, it's organic if you can do it, and use that as the base. And then if you wanna add seafood or dairy or meat at the next stage, at least you have a foundational uh, dish which everyone can eat, everyone. That's the key word. Uh, number two, increase water refill stations for zero waste hydration to boost the health of locals and visitors alike while reducing garbage issues. Number three, take away bad options at destinations. Ban 
single-use plastic bags, straws, or containers, and replace them with reusable or paper or biodegradable only. Especially on places like Sacred Island of Miyajima, they have wild deer on the island. The wild deer you see eating plastic from the beach, from ocean plastics washing in, but also eating plastics from tourists because it has food residue on it. Number four, promote local products, sites, and services that support artisans and traditional culture in that area. That's appeal. Uh, you can't underrate that because it's unique and it's different and it's a way to stand out. It also supports local creative people, traditional crafts and local artisans to continue preserving that part of the culture. Reuse of old structures and materials by renovating and upcycling instead of replacing, knocking down, destroying and building new is a great way to also do this. Number five, train local guides to engage with visitors, know how to avoid crowds, highlight local products, encourage the use of refill water stations, and suggest great plant-based options or other things which suit the visitors they are guiding. Also, one thing I would love to mention, please, 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 let's create professional guide services which are high quality and which do this and create jobs for guides, even if it's only part-time for some locals. If people speak English or other languages or are just welcoming, even if they only speak a few words in rural areas, get them paid to do guiding. Guiding should not be only done by volunteers. We have huge demand for good guides in this country. Let's start training people and the guides can really be such an asset to promoting sustainable tourism in Japan and around the world, I think. Uh, we are all travelers. There's a lot of negativity about tourism as it suddenly increases, but there are so many positive benefits of travel for international communication, mutual understanding across borders, boosting the economy, support of local products, and preservation of traditional culture. Hiroshima, where I'm based, is a great example of how tourism can be used to rebuild a city and follow a vision to spread a positive message of peace. But every destination has room for improvement, and it is an ongoing process of assessment, training, and strategy creation. It would be great to see a percentage of tourism revenue go to clean, renewable energy for local destinations to boost the value of people who want to live there, as well as to create high-quality, chilled water refill stations, also something locals would love, and to plant trees for cleaner air, as well as provide shade. Now there's another example of where it would really benefit local people as well as visitors. Finding ways to attract the right kind of tourist to bring an in income as well as more sustainable practices is also an opportunity to preserve the environment and our communities, which then enhances both the visitor and local experience. There is no us and them in tourism as we all travel at one time or another. We can all strive to be a better tourist. I hope you enjoyed this post and this podcast. You can actually clap up to 50 times on the Medium articles if you like it. And let me know if you have any other suggestions, comments, or links to related stories and information. Uh, speaking of an ongoing assessment, that's how I think of my work and my knowledge and understanding as well. I am trying to be curious and keep that open-minded feeling of accepting new information, always on the lookout for new ideas. And uh, if you have any tips, please definitely get in touch. You can find me, uh, Joy Jarman Walsh, on LinkedIn. I'm still on X. <laughs> Twitter, JJ Walsh, uh, Facebook, and Instagram at Inbound Ambassador. I look forward to hearing from you and see you next time. I think I figured out. And I bet
you.